Okay, good evening class. This is Mr. Gilbert again. Um, this is part two of our series on uh, drawing from start to finish that I'm working on and going through the whole process together. So um, for this one, the first thing I decided to do was uh, a couple color studies so that I had a better idea of where I wanted to proceed next because it may depend on um, what colors go where and, and what techniques go where as to how I proceed um, at the next point. And so I decided that this medium gray area, this, this gray tones in the bird and the moon shape up in the sky, um, I wanted those to be done in, in silver point. And since silver point's a lot less forgiving um, a technique, I decided that that would be good to start um, putting that down first, get that going, and then go in with the watercolors next. And then I can adjust, uh, go back into the silver point to make any adjustments that I need to. So this is all done fairly lightly so far, the areas that I've covered, um, which leaves me room to make them darker if I need to. Uh, but yet, to get the drawing going and, and get some uh, uh, material laid down. Okay, so uh, the color studies a good next step. And then, let's see, let's talk a little bit about what silver point is. Um, this is probably an unfamiliar... Uh, technique. So <clears throat> uh, the silver wire that I use to make the mark is has to be pure silver wire. It can't be the kind that you might find in most hobby stores, which is a brass wire that has a silver coating um, or silver plating to it, and, and that's just not going to work. Um, so real silver wire, and, and one place to get it from is I got mine from this place called Rio Grande uh, Jewelry Supply in, I think, in Arizona. And they're at uh, www.riogrand.com. Uh, the nice thing about that uh, particular um, dealer is that you don't have to buy a large quantity. There's, there's really not much of a minimum. And so, you know, I spent maybe 2 or $3 on this short section of wire. And it maybe cost uh, 2 or $3 to get it shipped. So a total of $6. And that much silver wire um, will last quite a long time. And... Uh, yeah, it, silver works, gold works, um, any any pure soft metal like copper will actually work pretty well too. Uh, but generally silver is the best because of the way that it oxidizes over time. It goes from a, a beautiful shiny gray um, with exposure to air, it'll get a little darker and turn a, a darker black kind of color. Um, copper may turn various different colors and kind of look ugly. And gold is just way too expensive and doesn't tarnish at all. And so it always looks too shiny, I guess. So silver's the best. Um, and this is a 24 gauge uh, 0.999 fine round wire. Uh, the, I chose that gauge because it fits into a standard 0.5 millimeter uh, mechanical pencil. So that's all that I did was I just cut off a, a section, cut off a section of wire and got it in there and it holds beautifully and it draws a nice crisp line. I've also got a slightly heavier gauge wire and I put that into this uh, hobby tool which is made for tiny tiny little drill bits and so it has this little chuck adjustable chuck at the end that kind of holds on tight and so I have a short section of thicker wire which is pure silver and that gets just placed into there and then tighten the chuck and it, it works just like a regular drawing tool it's a little bit heavy but um, makes a nice, uh, slightly, <clears throat> excuse me, broader stroke of line um, than the, the, the thinner wire. And so that's what I'm using to draw with. And then the paper has to be coated with uh, gesso. Otherwise you won't get, um, you won't get the silver to actually write on the paper. So this section of paper, um, this section here, has some pencil marks on it, which I'll explain later, but um, if I draw my silver across there, really nothing comes off. But on the side that I've coated with a thin layer of gesso, um, it draws just like a hard pencil, essentially. Now, keep in mind that you really can't erase silver point uh, once you've made a mark. Um, Especially a harder, uh, if you press harder, it really kind of makes it impossible to erase. 
And so blending stumps, of course, don't work. You can't smudge it with your finger, which is an advantage because as I work with the piece, I know I'm not gonna accidentally smudge something that, that looks good the way it is. But that means that it's kind of like pen and ink where you, once you've made a, a mark, you've made your decision, it, it's gonna be there. And so you gotta be a little more careful and kind of plan things out. Um, yeah, and then the other technique with silver point that I wanted to mention uh, is just the way that I lay down my strokes. I either do cross hatching, do a lot of cross hatching with it, and I also kind of build up gray tone similar to how you would do with a pencil. But I wanted to show you guys uh, something to avoid with doing this. So this is an example with pencil, but it's the same with silver point. Is that if I'm trying to fill in an area, so I'm gonna fill in this area with gray tone. Um, if I start doing this sort of scrubbing motion, see it's starting to look okay. The problem is, is that scrubbing back and forth usually end up with these kind of ugly overlap areas as you kind of get the two areas you're working on going. And then trying to control that edge is pretty tough. And then it just looks kind of ugly, like the way that all that tone is kind of getting scrubbed in there. And that's kind of a, a technique you want to avoid. Don't scrub. What you can do instead is to, got my uh, area here, is to carefully lay down sort of uh, parallel strokes, all going the same direction. So I'm just pressing down as I go this way. Um, and that what that does is as I lift off, I kind of get a, a, the line goes from thicker to thin. That's kind of the key to this. And so as I go into this area now, I don't get that horrible overlapping effect can see it's just a much more smoothly blended transition from one area to the next. And that's because I feathered my strokes together. That's kind of the technique. It's called, I call it feathering. I don't know if that's an actual name of it or whatever, but I feel like if I can do that, I get a much smoother gradation of tone and it looks much more beautiful and convincing. And it doesn't look like a three-year-old did it. Well, I, I mean, I, I kind of like the way three-year-olds make art, so I don't want to um, use that as an example. Someone who's not refined, I guess, is how I would put it. Okay, and then um, the other thing that happens is it, it's nice to have all your strokes going the same direction. It kind of gives that whole area this directional feel. Instead of like going a different direction for the rest of that and filling it in or, or changing direction at this edge, that kind of messes up that whole thing. So what you can do and what I've done on the final piece is to use a shield. In this case, it's just a black and white photograph that I didn't like. And I cut a small section out and that's thin. Um, you can use paper, cardboard, a plastic sheet, anything that's thin enough. You can set it down on the paper and use that to, to sort of block your stroke. Okay, so as I come up to that edge, with the shield in place, now I don't have to change direction. And I can use the same sort of convincing motion. Um, I don't have to change the quality of my stroke. I can just let go and do it. And so the whole thing has the same character. And yet I still get total control over where those strokes end. I mean, I could, I could sit here and kind of try and end every stroke right at that edge freehand. But again, the quality of the stroke has changed because I've, I've gotten out of that, that same rhythm. And the same thing in this direction. I might want to just go right up to that edge. Or I can go this way and sort of adjust where that shield is so that all those strokes land at the same point. Okay, so use a shield. It's really handy for maintaining stroke integrity and direction and line quality without having to slow down or change direction. And it just makes that area look so nice. You can see this area is, is messed up because I totally changed the direction just to fill in that one area. And that sort of stands out as being kind of a, a negative um, where the rest of it looks from here on looks really great. 
Okay, so that's my sort of tip and trick to share with you um, as we go through this drawing, okay? Until next time.